What's up YouTube, Jay here. And in this video, I'm gonna give you a crash course into the Inkscape SVG editor. Uh, I really love the Inkscape editor for editing things like logos, icons, thumbnails, diagrams, and just art in general. But I do feel like the learning curve, at least the initial learning curve, is relatively sharp compared to some other image editors. And I've had some friends who felt similarly. So once we get into the video, you'll see kind of what I mean by that. So if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. To install Inkscape, you'll go to inkscape.org and either click download, download the stable version or download now and it'll give you a download based on your operating system. When you first boot up Inkscape, you'll see something that looks like this. You may have different options selected by default. So if your Inkscape looks a little bit different than mine, here are my settings. You can change your settings to match mine or just keep in mind that the icons may look a little bit different. Uh, you got some supporting links and then time to draw. You can select a format over here on the left. If you've got existing files, you could select them here or you can just click new document. The format doesn't really matter until you get to the exporting phase, which I'll talk about a little bit later. So don't worry too much about it. Just create a new document and then we'll pop into Inkscape. I'll note here that I'm currently sharing a 1080p screen because it works well on YouTube. But if you're using a 4K screen, you may want to increase the icon size uh, because it's kind of hard to see the icons at 4K. They kind of shrink down based on the pixel size. So you can go to edit preferences and then increase the icon size and the top icon size as needed. Just thought I'd throw that in there because normally I am on a 4K screen and it's very helpful to have the slightly bigger icons. With that said, let's hop into Inkscape. So we're gonna talk about creating shapes and then coloring and editing shapes and then exporting. So kind of three things for this video. One thing I will mention is that Inkscape is a vector image editing tool as opposed to a raster editing tool. So if you ever used a tool like Microsoft Paint, your image is a grid of pixels, whereas in a vector vector graphic such as SVG, which Inkscape is an SVG editor, the graphics are actually determined by some math. If you're interested in learning more about raster versus vector, I have a different video and I'll try and make sure to link it up there and down in the video description. So with that said, we're dealing with vector images and that's enough for this video. So you can see right off the bat, there's a ton of icons here in Inkscape and the majority of these icons I never use. I probably use like 10 of these icons on a regular basis. And I'll show you the icons that I typically use now. So this is one of the reasons that I think Inkscape has a sharp learning curve. It's just there's so many options. It can be kind of overwhelming and you don't really know what's important and what's not. So I'll try if I can to get an image of like the highlighted icons with labels that I actually tend to use. But I'll go ahead and show them to you right now. We'll start off by creating some shapes. So on the left side, you can click a shape and then drag it out and there's a square. We got a circle. We've got, you know, assorted shapes. I don't really use this much. Um, and then we have the path or the line tool. So we can click around just simply left clicking and we can create our own shapes and then we can close the shape. And then you've also got a pen tool. I really don't use this too much because I find the line or the path tool works for most cases that I would use a pen tool. So that's that. And then there's the text tool. Hi there. And you can see the text looks a little bit weird. That's because Inkscape or vector images or SVG specifically has the concept of a fill and a stroke. So you can see here the black ish is the stroke, basically the perimeter of the shape. And then the inside is the fill and we can change those values independently. The reason the text looks so weird is because we have stroke set on it. So I'm going to remove that stroke and set the fill to something darker with transparency. So there we go. We got some text, squares, circles, and our open shape. And to navigate around the document, you can left click to select an item. You can left click and drag to select multiple items. You can use your center mouse button to move around the screen. And then the right button just opens the context menu, which I almost never use. But the middle mouse button, get comfortable with that because that's what you'll be using to move around. To zoom in and out, you can press control and scroll in and out to zoom in and out. And you can also scroll up and down and it'll scroll up and down vertically or shift and scroll scrolls left and right. But for the most part, I just use middle mouse to move around and then control scroll to zoom in and out. And then, you know, once you select, you can move, move multiple items. With the paths, uh, I like using the paths a lot if I'm tracing something out or drawing a shape. You can also use this node editor tool to click into one of your custom shapes and individually drag items around. If you have an object selected, we have these handles for dragging to resize. We can resize diagonally, all that stuff. And then if you click the object again, you get a rotation. And the same happens with the circle. 
we can drag it wide and you know whatever taller when we click it we can rotate it and same with our custom shape we can rotate that as well and text as well you can undo by pressing Control z and then you can redo by pressing Control shift z but i'm going to go ahead and undo some of this rotation because it looks a little off if you move things and you press Control, you can lock them to an axis or if you're rotating you can lock to like 15 degree increments so if i press Control and rotate you'll notice it jumps I believe they're 15 degree increments. It may be different, but somebody else can do the math. Or if you're moving and you press control, right now it's locked, so it doesn't change the vertical. It only moves along the horizontal axis, or if I'm moving it up and down, which is just based on where the uh, object started. So that's more or less how to create some objects. Obviously looks a little bit like gibberish here, but you can make nice looking things out of this. Now let's hop over to, well, let's talk a little bit more. By default, when you click on something, we still just have our normal page level settings. You know, we can flip and rotate stuff. But if you open them with the tool they were created with, for example, if I open the square with the square tool, I get specific settings for squares or rather rectangles. So I can set the height, width, the radius of the corners. If I were to select a circle, I'll get some similar things. If I select the text with the text tool, then I get font, font size, italics versus bold, spacing between lines, that type of thing. So again, if you just select the object, you get some default settings that are there for all objects. But if you select the object with the tool that was used to create it, then you get more settings. And the same goes for this custom shape. So we have some settings here, but really if you're moving around a custom shape, you'll probably be using the node tool to move stuff around. And you can do stuff like if I shift click multiple of these nodes, I can auto smooth them. So kind of a cool thing with paths. I really like paths for tracing around stuff and just drawing art in general, but that's enough for the creating objects. Now let's hop over to the right side and talk about modifying some of these objects. The two things that, well, I would say the three things I use the most from this right panel are the export, which we'll get to in just a minute, the fill and stroke for changing the colors. And then the last one is the alignment, which doesn't show in here, but align and distribute. So if I select all of these objects, I can align them all on the horizontal axis, or if I undo them, I can align them on the vertical axis. The icons over here are pretty representative of what they do. You can also space things out equally. So let's say we want these things evenly spaced right now. There's, they're obviously not equally spaced. We could distribute them with equal space between or equal space from the center points, those types of things. So pretty useful for most things, especially like if you're drawing diagrams and you have lots of little boxes in your diagram and you want to align them horizontally or vertically, pretty useful tool. The align and distribute is one of the things I use. And then the other thing is the colors, which we saw me mess with earlier with the text. So again, we have fill, which is the inner and stroke, which is the edges or the perimeter. There's a few different modes for the colors. I typically default to HSL, hue, saturation, and lighting because that's what's selected by default. But if you're super into image editing and color correction, that type of thing, then choose whichever you prefer. And basically you just set the hue, the saturation, the lightness and darkness of the image, and then you can also set opacity. So. Uh, if I set this, you know, we can hide the things behind it. Which brings me to another point. You can also raise and lower items in the image. So right now we see the circle is behind the square. If we come to object, we can raise all the way to the top or we can raise just in increments. And now we see the circle is above the square, no longer hidden. And I think that's page up and page down. Yep, page up and page down on the keyboard to do that. Pretty nice shortcut. We can also remove the stroke like we did with the text earlier. We can change the width of the stroke, make it super wide, uh, that type of thing. Make it have a dashed edges, lots of different things you can do. And for lines specifically, you can also add in markers for like making arrows, which is pretty nice for diagramming and that type of thing. You can also click these buttons on the bottom to select your color. So right now we have our fill is green and our stroke is brown. If I left click on this red, it will change our fill to red, which won't do anything for the arrow because it's only using the stroke. And if I shift click, let's say this green, it will change the stroke to green. If I click something that actually does have fill and again, I click this red, it'll change the fill to be red. 
it's not as bright of red because there's some transparency here, but yeah, I'd say those are the main tools that I use in Inkscape. Your little selector tool, we've got squares, circles, and I really should say rectangles and ellipses, and then the path tool, and then the node tool for when you have paths. On the right side, we talked about align and distribute, and then we have the color tools. And the final tool we have is exporting. So now let's talk about exporting an image from SVG. What a lot of people tend to think you do to export an image intuitively is you go to file and then you click save. And you may think that's how you're going to export an image from Inkscape. And in most other image editors, that is how you would save an image or save a final image. However, in Inkscape, that actually saves this source. So this file itself that can be reopened in Inkscape to edit your SVG, this is what this save saves. To export a PNG from Inkscape, which is what most people intend to do, you have to come over here on the right and open the export pane. And there's a few different options for Inkscape. The first one is document and document selects all of these items, all the items you have in your Inkscape document and it would export them. And you can see what would be exported here in the bottom. Then we have page, which is this little white grid or white rectangle, which is sized based on the document type that you select when you first open Inkscape, but it can be changed after the fact. And to change that, you can go to File, Document Properties, and you can either change the format up here on the left, or you can manually change this. So let's say we wanna make it half the size. We can make it 105, and you can see that this shrank to half the width, or we could set it to a different size, and we can see it changed here again. So it's not like you can't undo your initial selection. The next thing we have is selection. So if I select an object and I select selection, then this is what would be exported. Or if I select multiple things, both of these would be selected, et cetera, et cetera. And finally, custom allows you to specify X and Y coordinates to what should be exported. Typically, if I'm exporting something, I'll either use page or selection, but it depends on your use case, what you wanna do. If you're thinking about the document size as you're creating your image and you're only creating stuff in here that you wanna export, that'll be great, but all Often selection works pretty well too. So once we've chosen a type of export to do, in this case, let's say we want to do a selection export, you can specify the height and width of the final rasterized image here because our monitors actually display images in raster and typically different programs are used to dealing with rasterized images as opposed to SVG images. SVG is great for editing, creating, and all that type of stuff, but often the final product is going to be a PNG or a JPEG or something, some kind of rasterized image, which is what export is for, is for exporting our SVG or parts of our SVG image as a raster image. So again, we're going to use selection. We've already selected our items to be exported. We can see them down here. We can select the width and height of our output image. You can set this to whatever you want, as small or as big as you want, but the difference is going to be the quality of the image. So let's do super small first, and we'll show you what poor quality looks like. And to choose where we want to export it, we can click this little icon here, and we're going to pop it in here. By default, the save as type is Inkscape SVG. If we want to rasterize the image, we can click JPEG or PNG. So I'm going to call this small. And then let's do one at higher resolution. So let's do this 1000 by 821. And we're going to call this large. And again, PNG. And save that. So now we have our small, which you can see the quality is horrible and our large, which is gonna be a bigger image size, but the quality is much nicer. There's still some pixelation and blurriness because we did have to rasterize the image. That's kind of the purpose of doing this export to PNG. But yeah, you can see the export process is a little bit different than other image editing tools and less straightforward and intuitive. So that's the purpose of this video. All right, so in this video, we went over how to or where to install the Inkscape editor. We talked about some of the icons on the left that are used for creating shapes. We talked about the icons on the right for aligning, changing the color, and doing exports. And then we talked about exporting documents, pages, a selection, and custom, and some of the different settings like the image size that you'll want to select when doing an export. And that brings us to the end of the video. If you liked the video and found it helpful, please consider giving the video a like so that other people will see it. If you want to see more videos like it in the future, Inkscape videos or programming videos, make sure to subscribe. And if you have any comments or questions, leave them down in the comment section below. As always, have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.